there's some great classics when talking about arcade games during the 1980s. Those of us that grew up during that time or were gamers then have our favorites. Mine just happens to be Galaga, but there are quite a few others that would probably take me too long to list off during this review. One such particular game has also been a favorite of mine, and has become synonymous with arcade gaming in the late 80s and early 90s. Afterburner. If you were alive back then, or if you were a gamer in the arcades, you definitely either played this game or at the very least know about it. Being that this is a trilogy review, the three games in the Afterburner series are the original, Afterburner 2, and Afterburner Climax. Now since these games have pretty much zero storyline, we can move right along to the fun shit. The original Afterburner was created and released by Sega in 1987 into arcades everywhere, and the machine itself was very hard not to miss. It featured a large joystick in the center, used for control and firing, and a secondary handle on the left, which controlled your throttle. You drop a quarter into the slot and blast off into the stratosphere. You take control of an F-14 Tomcat and speed your way through 18 stages of airborne destruction. Your plane is equipped with machine guns as well as a supply of missiles. You can move in any direction as well as do barrel rolls in order to evade enemy attacks. Get hit by a single missile or gunshot and you crash and burn. The difficulty is pretty much medium, so to speak, if you're at all good with games in general. Not too hard. The game ends and your score is tallied. And that's it. Yeah, not a whole lot to discuss, I guess, gameplay-wise, but that's okay. The game was released on Sega's X-Board arcade hardware. And while there weren't very many games that used the platform, mostly other driving or flying games, it still had very powerful sprite processing power. The music is hard rocking and very memorable. The graphics are on par for arcade units of the time, but things would be improved in later releases. The explosions are probably what most of us remember and completely drew your eyes towards the machine when someone wasn't playing it. There were versions released for the majority of Sega consoles back then, including the Genesis. Lastly, Afterburner is one of those games that really gives a good impression of what being in arcades was like growing up. It's all about noise and explosions and loud music. Wouldn't have it any other way. The sequel to the first Afterburner, Afterburner 2, was released later the same year as the first game. I found this surprising when doing research because I could have swore, according to memory at least, that there was a lot more time between when I played the original game and the second game. Because of such a short time in between releases, many people consider Afterburner 2 not a true sequel in the usual sense, but more of Afterburner version 1.5. Because of this, there really isn't too much difference in the two games, in terms of audio and visuals. Afterburner 2 really became famous and so memorable because of, you guessed it, the fucking arcade machine! Most notably shown briefly in Terminator 2, this thing was a beast. And fucking awesome! It was a total sit-down unit which was powered by servo motors, allowing not only up and down movement, but slight side to side turning as well. This thing was massive, and believe me, there was usually a line to play it. The gameplay is pretty much the standard fare, fly around, blow shit up, you know. As with the first game, Afterburner 2 received numerous ports to home systems of the time, but I don't recall ever playing it at home. With games like these, you really had to have the true experience of sitting down in the cockpit, flying around, explosions rocking your ears. When looking at both side by side, it actually is somewhat hard to tell them apart. But all in all, it was a terrific game to find in the arcades of the day. Okay, so we get to what is probably going to make up the bulk of this review. 
Afterburner Climax, and the little story that goes with it, as this game was nearly the reason I wasn't going to do this review in the first place. After the release of Afterburner 2, Sega pretty much put the franchise, or what was developing as a franchise on the shelf, and left it alone all the way through the millennium. Fast forward nearly 20 years later, and in 2006, we saw the release of Afterburner Climax into arcades. Now, it's fairly easy to say that I've never played Climax in the arcades, nor ever even seen the arcade unit. But being that it was released into the seventh generation of home consoles, that's not surprising as arcades had pretty much dried up by the time I graduated high school. There were a few different versions of the arcade machine, the deluxe version being the most pimped out one, where not only the chair, but the screen and upper unit would all move in unison, which looks fucking sweet! Following the arcade release, Sega would port the game to Xbox Live and the PSN Network in 2010. And this is the version I'll be reviewing. I happened to pick it up just by happenstance when I was browsing Xbox Live Marketplace, looking for new games. In hindsight, I'm so glad I did buy it when I did, because as of December 2014, you can't buy Afterburner Climax anymore, as it was delisted from all console stores. Yes, that's right, you can't buy it anymore. The only reason I was able to re-download it and play it was because I purchased it before this date and can still download it through sort of a workaround method. This is what I was referring to when I said I almost didn't do this review, as without Climax, I didn't have a trilogy to review. I had uninstalled it for my 360 and when I went to reinstall it again to record footage for the review, it was nowhere to be found. I haven't read a specific reason for this, but Internet rumors suggest that there were possibly some licensing issues between Sega and the aircraft manufacturers. We'll probably never know. Anyways, let's get to the game. The first thing you should notice is the huge upgrade in the graphics department. Climax looks amazing. I'm sure even more so if you played the arcade unit. The controls are still the same for the most part. You shoot missiles or your machine gun to take down enemy aircraft. Controlling your speed is also included and when pushed to maximum actually creates a sonic boom effect when going full afterburners. Two new gauges that have been added are your armor gauge, which is self-explanatory, but a nice addition as in previous games, it was one shot and you're dead. The second one is the Climax Gauge, which builds up over time, and when activated, gives you basically bullet time for jets, allowing you to lock onto multiple targets at once for large chain combos. The point of the game is still to get the biggest score, and the home release features several different features to augment this. You have the classic arcade mode, training, score attack, access to online leaderboards, and achievements as well. EX options are special game-altering options that are unlocked as you progress through the game, and allow things like infinite missiles and always afterburners. You blast off from the trusty aircraft carrier, and off we go. Unlike the previous games, Climax uses a branching level system, whereby you can access additional levels if certain requirements are met. You'll also notice that this game features a much more varied amount of environments than the first two games from canyons and oceans, to nighttime cities and sunset shipping ports. It's all beautifully rendered. You have the choice between three different aircraft, instead of just using the F-14 Tomcat, although I tend to still use it because of nostalgia. It's just an aesthetical difference anyways, the jets all control and handle the same. At the end of each stage you're given your total score and the percentage of enemy aircraft you destroyed. The sounds and music have also received a tremendous facelift as well, with rocking tunes and huge explosions filling the speakers. I especially like the atmospheric sounds like screaming through the clouds and doing barrel rolls at 800 miles an hour. <laughs> you, you may 
make it to the end and are given your final score, plus your ranking per time, enemies destroyed, and overall gameplay. In my opinion, Afterburner Climax is an awesome game, and it's such a shame that it's no longer available to play on consoles. A lot of people who probably like the series will never be able to play it now. Overall, Afterburner and its sequels are some of the best known arcade flying games of all time. From its modest start in the late 80s, to the latest HD release of Climax. The Afterburner series really stands the test of time, and is always a blast to play in any form. Simple, yet fantastic. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, take off into the stratosphere with these. Don't forget to check out my Twitch account for live shoot 'em up action, my real time playthrough videos, main Mondays, and other fun gaming videos as well.